Hey guys, Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Washing and Painting, Hammond, Louisiana. Thanks for joining us in this video today. In this video today here, we're going to talk about how we rebuilt a pressure wash trailer. I want to start out by saying this video is not going to be an all-inclusive video on how to build a pressure wash trailer, but I think I can give you some very good tips and tricks to make your next project go much easier. And if you're looking to start or grow your pressure wash business or start a parking lot striping business, you can go visit BillyDavisonVIP.com. Also, there'll be some information in the description of this video. So a quick backstory of what we're working on here. We have this current pressure wash trailer that you're looking at there. It was about two years in service. It had some GX 698 gallon per minute machines, which were great machines, but it was getting to a point where we had a few thousand hours on each machine and they were still running great, but I knew at some point it was going to need to be refreshed and changed out. So I started doing some research on what type of pressure washer that I might could exchange them out for. And I ran across these G IGX 800s. One of my more important things I was looking at when purchasing a new pressure washer was the reliability. And Honda was very hard to beat. Usually Hondas are extremely reliable. So I wanted to stick with a Honda engine. And when I came across these 800cc twin cylinder engines with a pump, attached to it it produces anywhere between 12 and 14 gallons per minute i knew that was a winner if you watch our youtube channel in the past you know that our crew stays extremely busy doing pressure washing and parking lot striping the pressure washing part of our business usually runs a daytime crew and a nighttime crew so reliability was very important to me and we'll say this up front if you plan on rebuilding a pressure wash trailer by yourself you might want to reconsider that task this is definitely a major task to undertake so we called in our crew and we also had some friends stop by to give us a hand these machines weigh several hundred pounds each so we decided to use an engine lift to help assist us moving these things around they do have some anchor points on the top of the gx690s and the igx800 which comes in really handy when picking them up Again, they weigh several hundred pounds, so you got to use a lot of caution, and it's best to have several people there to help you kind of move things around and reposition these machines. While I was in the process of rebuilding my pressure wash trailer, I decided to go ahead and get brand new tires for it and do some other maintenance issues to the pressure wash trailer. As you know, running a pressure wash trailer as much as we do, there are things that kind of start to rust, that start to break, things start to give way over a period of time after all you are carrying a good bit of weight on it and sometimes you're not traveling down the best roads in the world so they bumpy so you have to be real mindful of your trailer condition and keeping it road worthy right here you see apex and big chris moving the igx 800 to a position to where we can pick it up and put it on the trailer when that time came to be so another thing you want to think about when moving these machines around you want to position them to a point to where you don't have to move them again. So make sure when you do move them once, that's where it needs to be. Uh, we almost made a mistake and put it in the wrong spot. Then we realized it needed to go forward some more. So be thoughtful about it. Think about it. Have some planning in hand. Um, right here, we're backing up the old pressure wash trailer into the driveway. We laid down some plastic on the ground because we knew we was going to be making a mess and repainting the deck of the trailer. I will tell you this, whenever you put plastic on concrete, a good way to hold that plastic down is wet underneath the plastic and then lay the plastic down on that wet concrete. You'll be surprised. It'll stay wet under there for days and that uh, water tension on a wet concrete so, sort of kind of helps hold the plastic in place for a long period of time. Basically, as you see in here, we're taking off components of the old pressure wash trailer, such as the gas tanks, hose reel, that sort of thing. All of this was buckled down, so we had to take uh, all of those brackets off so we can loosen it up and take it off the trailer. And basically, I wanted to have the trailer completely empty, um, the deck completely clear of any components, the tank, the uh, hose reel, gas tanks, everything needed to come off because I knew I wanted to repaint the trailer and uh, do a couple repairs to the deck as well. Right here, we are removing one of the old pressure washers, the GX690s. Even uh, it's smaller than the IGX800s, but it still weighs several hundred pounds. So the engine lift came in really handy 
And uh, so it did have some lift points on it so we can just grab it, pick it straight on up, made things much easier. I couldn't imagine trying to pick this thing up with several people. Uh, I think you could probably get into some trouble if someone lose their grip or something like that and this thing falls over. Not only you could break the pressure washer, but if it landed on your foot, you break your foot for sure. So always be careful. Use some straps and have several people there to help you kind of move things around. Basically, we were taking them off the trailer, uh, put them on, on the ground, and then we was going to load them back into Apex's truck. Um, so we wanted to make sure uh, the truck was in really good position so we can just swing over the engine lift because um, you don't want to be moving this thing around too much. It's got a lot of weight on it. It's kind of hard to roll. And plus, this driveway here had a little bit of slant to it. As you can see right there, Apex is backing up his truck. We dropped his tailgate, basically. We had some cardboard to put down just because this my old pressure washer, the skid feet on it had kind of worn off. So there was would have been some metal-to-metal -metal contact on his bed of his truck. So we just laid some uh, cardboard down. And the cardboard also will assist, as you see here in a minute, we put the old pressure washer in, on top of the cardboard and that will allow us to kind of help slide it back because we had to put both machines in there. And as you know, these machines have fuel lines that had to be disconnected, battery cables and water plumbing. So make sure your battery cables are tucked up because there's two battery cables they come off these machines, so whether you mounting one or taking off, exchanging it out, make sure those battery cables don't get tucked back under the machine when you set it but down. But once we had the deck of the pressure washer trailer completely cleared off all equipment components, that is the perfect time to do any repairs, and you will need some repairs done. There may be some bad pieces of wood or some fasteners that have walked up or came loose over the past several years of running up and down the highway. So make all those repairs whenever you got the deck of the pressure washer cleared off and clean if you're doing a rebuild. If you're doing a new build, it might be a good time to paint the deck of the trailer or seal it or whatever you want to do. In our case here, we want to repaint the deck of the trailer with a high-grade paint, um, also do any repairs. Because I knew at that point, once we start mounting all the components back on it, this trailer should be in service another couple years. And uh, we want to make sure we do all those repairs and go ahead and take your time with it. It's going to cost you a few dollars, but in the long run, it's much easier to do it when the trailer's empty versus once you have all the components mounted. Right here, we have got all the deck of the trailer uh, cleaned off, repainted, repairs made. We had new tires and rims put on the trailer. We also checked the electrical wiring on the trailer just to make sure everything was in good shape. And it was. We didn't expect any issues there. But we wanted to make sure all of that was done before we started to mount these IGX 800s and start to anchor those down. Another very important to think about when mounting a pressure washer to a pressure wash trailer is... A few things about the exhaust, um, where your fuel lines are going to run, that sort of thing. Can you get to the pressure washer to do maintenance on it, such as changing oil, oil filter, pump oil, that sort of thing, and fittings? Because, you know, obviously this is a machine. It's going to be running hundreds of hours a month, and things are going to need to be maintained. So make sure you mount this, whether you're doing it on a trailer or a flatbed, that you can get to it to do repairs and also that exhaust needs to be at least 36 inches away from anything. So we mounted our exhaust like we did when our old trailers pointing back towards the tailgate of the truck. That kind of allows us to have at least 36 inches, probably more about like 42 inches. And you're usually pretty safe with that. I have seen where people mount the exhaust pointing towards their a buffer tank and obviously, you're going to melt the buffer tank every time. Another good pointer or tip when building a pressure wash trailer is make sure your fuel tanks will be on the same side as the fuel tank on the vehicle that's pulling it. Um, that will make it a lot easier when you stop to get fuel and doing a fill up. Having it on the other side will cause you to have to use two separate pumps, that sort of thing. So make sure everything is uh, very well thought out. Um, you basically want to keep everything simple 
But you do want to keep in mind, you're going to be running electrical wiring to these machines for the electric start, but also sometimes near that same conduit, you're going to be running fuel lines as well. So you want to keep that in mind. Also make sure everything is up to spec. You don't want to just be kind of putting things together halfway. You want to make sure you use the proper wire nuts, proper fuel clamps. Everything should be to the specs because there's a couple things about this. You're running this trailer up and down the road. It's out in the elements, that sort of thing. And things are bound to work loose and you know give you issues down the road so you want to mount things in a manner to where it's going to not come off the trailer be vibrating or shifting around and another important thing is you know god forbid you were to get into an accident all of these components on the trailer or your flatbed that you're building need to be very well anchored down the last thing we need is a 500 pound pressure washer flying off the trailer at 40 miles an hour so you want to make sure everything's very well mounted down take your time with it use larger washers and larger bolts than what you think you might need also that is a anti-theft deterrent as well if everything's bolted down and anchored down i've seen guys use bungee cords and straps and tie straps and all that guys that's really not the way to do it um I spent about $15,000 rebuilding this trailer that was with the purchase of the machines and the new tires and rims and other new components. So it is expensive, but in the big scheme of things, that's about a week and a half worth of revenue on my average week. So, you know, thinking about it long term, it's an investment. And again, you should be able to get at least a couple years out of service out of one of these wash trailers especially if you're maintaining it and doing all the proper things with it so guys we had a lot of fun rebuilding our pressure wash trailer it took us approximately 11 hours a couple of days of fooling around with it but i think it was all worth it if you got the time to build it yourself i highly recommend it because that time when it breaks down you'll know exactly how everything goes back together and how to fix it Last but not least, make sure you go get some signs on your trailer. Even if it's nothing really all that fancy, whatever you can afford, get some signs on it as soon as you can. So those signs will start to generate some very powerful leads. And again, if you're looking to find out how we grow our pressure wash business running a daytime crew, nighttime crew, pretty much every day out of the year, doing parking lot striping, traveling all over, doing this type of work go check out billy davisonvip.com there'll be some information in the description as well we put a lot into some of these training courses that are a little bit unique so go check them out and grow your pressure wash businesses with very little marketing costs again i'm billy davison here with davison pressure washer painting i definitely appreciate you watching our video on our pressure wash trailer build and I uh, hope you subscribe and hope to see you in the next video.